Hello, everyone. Welcome to Higher Ed Live. Um, I'm Daniela Norton. I'll be your guest host tonight. I'm very excited for this week's show. Uh, Higher Ed is the weekly web show for marketing and web professionals. You can tune in every Thursday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, um, on higheredlive.com, or you can join, or I should say, and you can join the conversation on Twitter using the Higher Ed Live hashtag. And I encourage you all to follow me tonight at, at Daniela Norton. Tonight, I'm here um, in my office in lovely upstate New York, Saratoga Springs. It's a lovely place to come over the summer. I encourage you to visit and stop by Skidmore College. I'm the online community manager here at Skidmore, which basically means I have the coolest job on campus. I manage the college's social media presence. I'm responsible for all the strategy. I'm the primary producer for um, content, that ever important content on sites like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, Pinterest, anything you can think of. It's usually me behind the wheels. So I apologize, and I'm also really excited to do it. Um, I've really been looking forward to tonight's show and the guests that we have tonight because our topic is one that I often talk about and that I often get asked questions about. Um, our guests are going to talk to us about how to use social media for customer service. Um, it's We're going to go over best practices, key services, benefits, show some examples of what they're doing and how this pertains to alumni, alumni relations in particular. My guests are Suzette Gardner and Colby Anderson, and they're at George Washington University, and they are the two-person alumni relations social media team. And I think we're tweeting out their handles now, so you guys can follow all three of us and use the higher ed live hashtag. Before we hear from them, though, we have to take a break for our sponsors. Um, give a few shout-outs to Omni Update, uh, which actually Skidmore College is an OU campus campus and we love them, can't say enough good things about them. Omni um, Update is the leading web content management system, a CMS for higher education. The company's web CMS OU campus is secure and scalable with great tools and features, deployment flexibility, and an awesome user community. Their help, I can speak from experience that their help site is wonderful and they can answer all the questions. Um, if you need new CSS3 tools, for redesigning and improving the website, check out Omni Updates Primer, and I think we're tweeting a link to that now. So be sure to check that out. Our other Higher Ed Live sponsor is Integral, another company I'm very familiar with. They created the Schools app for Facebook. It's a private Facebook community to boost enrollment and retention. You can check out their blog, Integral Insights, for posts on admissions marketing, student engagement, social media, and higher education. And I think we're tweeting a link to the blog right now. Um, I often, I have an, R, an RSS feed set up for their blog, and I use a lot of their information in my day-to-day -day work. So it's a great resource for everyone. I think we are ready to get started and introduce our guests tonight. Um, we have, like I said before, Suzette Gardner and Colby Anderson. Suzette joined GW's Alumni Strategic Marketing and Communications team in 2011. Her responsibilities include engaging George Washington's diverse alumni through web, mobile, and social media strategies. She has over 10 years experience in digital marketing and working with nonprofits, constituencies, and a former software <laughs> service giant, Kintero, which is now Convio. And she's not lying when she says giant. I have experience with Convio, too, and it is multifaceted. Um, you can follow her on Twitter tonight at, at Suzette Gardner. And we also have Colby joining us. Um, Colby, who is an alum of George Washington School of Media and Public Affairs. He's been exploring the role of social media in higher ed since his freshman year of college, which I get the, the sneaking position wasn't too long ago, Colby. Um, he now oversees social media for regional alumni programs at George Washington. His interests include using social media and crisis communication, something that could probably be its own higher ed life episode altogether and social media and influence campaign. And you can follow him on Twitter at Colby C. Anderson. So how are you guys doing tonight? How's Washington, D.C.? Pretty good. It's uh, not as hot as it has been, but um, it's a nice evening here. That's good. Colby, how about you? Doing well? 
absolutely, absolutely happy to be here tonight. Wonderful. Thank you both for joining us. I think we're just going to dive right, right in here. Um, Suzette, I'm going to ask you the first question, and I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit about um, the background on your digital communications presence, um, who your alumni are, where you were seeing them interact, where you would say your alumni are looking for customer service, and if social media really kind of fit into that. Well, we have about 250,000 living alums, and that's a lot of folks to try to connect with. And uh, but we're, you know, we're doing our best. Um, email is traditionally the way we keep up with people, and also direct mail. Um, both of, you know, those ways of uh, connecting with people are a little bit challenged right now. So we've really been investing a lot into social media, which is really where a lot of people are gathering. Um, our social media presence is not that old. We've been, you know, cultivating these networks for about five years now, and over the past two years, we've really put a lot of work in. And um, I'd say most of our, our followers or our community that's in our social networks are, you know, maybe folks in their 20s and 30s. Of course, it's, uh, you know, it's a pretty diverse audience. We have folks all the way up to 75, but we find that folks in their 20s and 30s are keener to follow us in social media. Um, it's been great engaging them. We are not just uh, growing our networks, but we're also are learning more about what is it they want from us and how do they expect us to serve them in you know using social media so it's been a great learning experience and while we're learning we're also you know providing a service and assisting a lot of folks and we really have come to realize that one of the key things that uh, we're using social media for is actually customer service so we're happy to be here today to talk about that and now you are, I'm assuming you're on the big three, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Um, oh, yes. Can you tell us a little bit about what those communities look like and maybe what they look like before you started thinking about um, customer service? Well, yes. Uh, we're on um, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. We're also on Instagram. We're doing Vine. We're pretty much everywhere, mostly because we're testing to see what networks are fertile. So that's the first thing that we did is to establish ourselves um, in several networks and to see which one of them take off, to basically to see where alums want us. Do they want us in Facebook or wherever? And so we found that LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook are the three main places that they really are trying to come together as a community and that we can actually play a role. So um, so that's that has been going really, really well for us. Um, what did it look like before we started using it for customer service? Um, I think uh, people were mostly trying to reach us through email or trying to poll each other for information to answer questions about different issues they were facing, uh, especially with uh, connecting with benefits and services at the university. So once we set up our presence there, we were better able to field a lot of questions um, and to also provide you know, support and service in a lot of ways. Wonderful. So then I'm going to I'm going to follow up with Colby on this one. Um, how did you and Suzette and maybe even the alumni relations office as a whole determine that you needed to start using social media for customer service that it was a priority and tell us about um, if it was a challenge and if you needed to get buy in from from higher up how you went about doing that. Sure. Um, so the first social network that I think we started doing this on uh, was Facebook. And that made a lot of sense to the folks in our office. Uh, they were all on Facebook uh, personally. They understood that uh, when you had a, a customer service issue, whether that be negative or positive, they would go to Facebook to share that. So uh, that was kind. Of, that was very much everyone was behind us. Uh, everyone understood that we needed a presence on Facebook um, for customer service issues. Twitter, uh, it was a little bit of a harder buy-in. Not as many uh, higher-ups are on Twitter. Um, and so we kind of had to explain. We had to introduce what Twitter was. Um, a third of our alumni, or about a third of our alumni, live in Washington, D.C., in New York City. Um, so we had to look at the data to see, um, you know, what is Twitter's user base. A recent uh, Pew study shows that, um, let me see here. I've got the data here, and I think you're seeing it right now. Um, that 20% of internet users in urban areas use Twitter and that uh, number only increases if you only look at uh, 18 to 49 year olds. So we knew that uh, that pretty much that describes the alumni base that we wanted to connect with. 
Um, and then once we started explaining hashtags and how people were using those, whether whether you had those or not, uh, whether you were providing them or they were making them up, uh, people were communicating there, and uh, we needed to be there to track what people were saying. Hashtags are often harder to explain than you would think. I <laughs> I have found in my and even in my own work, people get confused when you say hashtag. So. I bet that was a fun battle. <laughs> it was, but you know what? I think I think we've got buy-in now. We've got um, some people in our office that are not on Twitter um, walking around going uh, hashtag long meeting. So <laughs> now they are they are using it in everyday conversation. So I guess that means we have buy-in now. Wonderful, good job. Actually, um, what, one of the things that we actually started doing too is to include a hashtag with all our event promotions. So that way we are, you know, getting ahead of aggregating sentiments and feedback about any events that we host and stuff like that. So people are really getting into it because of that sort of mandatory requirement that we've set up. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. We should tweet that. I'm going to tweet that right now, actually, while I ask you your next question. Um, speaking of events, can you tell us a little bit about some of the different services the Alumni Relations um, Office provides? And do some of them lend themselves better to social media? Um, if so, which ones? And, and then can you tell us a little bit, Suzette, about how you use social media to amplify those services? Well, we have a wide variety of benefits and services. Um, we have stuff ranging from travel benefits um, to um, banking services to um, email services. But I think uh, where social media is concerned, the benefits that we we find that people really enjoy, you know, coupling with social media are events and also our webinar series. We have a G webinar series, which is very popular. So between events and G webinar, uh, folks are using you know those two services to to reach and bring in other people into the community and to also share how they feel about those um, services. Uh, they also use it to communicate with, uh, let's say, if we have a speaker for an event or even someone who is hosting or, or being interviewed you know, for a webinar, they also use it to communicate with folks in that way. Nice. Um, I think one of the things about social media, and I'm sure you both have heard this, I know I have um, here at Skidmore and when talking to other colleagues, um, is sort of the, the fear factor that um, institutions are almost scared of some of the comments that alumni will leave on Facebook or some of the tweets that, will, that, that they'll send out to hundreds of followers. Um, is there, do you have any tips on how to make the most of a situation like this? Is there a case where maybe it works in the school's favor? Well, social media gives you an opportunity to tackle those head on because if you're not a part of the conversation, it's going to continue anyway and you have the opportunity to take a hold of the conversation and to bring a resolution to whatever situation is being raised, especially stuff that is negative. So uh, one thing that we've done is we have a very active alumni community and so we can sometimes tap folks in our community to tackle even some of the questions that we get or some of the negative feedback that we might have if we have someone that feels, you know, maybe a campaign or, or anything that we've put out they didn't appreciate it. There's always someone on the other side who thought it was a great idea. Sometimes we get those two people talking, you know, and sometimes that brings a better understanding. We also directly communicate with folks that are disgruntled. Um, we often use social media to take the conversation out of the um, public sphere into a private one, and that normally helps with the situation as well. But, you know, mostly we try to pre present genuine solutions for whatever problems our alums might raise um, using social media, because that's key to, to a solution. And now, Colby, have you heard, um, or oh, uh, actually, you look like you were about to add something to that before I ask a question. Go ahead. I was about to jump in there, and I think... <laughs> Uh, one thing to, to keep in mind is that if an alum, uh, NUS or an alumna, has gone to social media to uh, have a grouse, to use Suzette's word, words, uh, once you move that offline and uh, you provide outstanding customer service, um, usually, uh, oftentimes, they will come back to social media and say, hey, props to my university, my alma mater for fixing this problem and uh, or addressing it. Um, and I think that is really when uh, you can see it. social media can work in your favor. Yes, people saw that the alum had a complaint, but they also saw that, that we took the steps to fix it. 
um, and that the, the relationship has been restored. And I think that's something that can really work in the university's favor. And now let me ask you, time frame wise, because social media is something that's really fast, really constant, totally moving all the time, do you have a specific window you'd like to get back to people by, um, or a general rule of thumb you would recommend people respond to, um, to these uh, outbursts or even the positive comments? <laughs> Well, my first recommendation is that you watch things to see if they become, you know, trending topics, more or less. So we use um, uh, social media monitoring software to help us with that. They pick up certain keywords. They, they you know, tell us if someone is saying, you know, um, something negative or tweeting a lot or, or saying a lot of stuff about us on Facebook. And then we watch to see if a l other people are joining that discussion and if it's, you know, sort of gaining legs. Mm -hmm. And once that happens, then we usually, you know, we have an internal meeting to, to make sure that we're all on the same page and that we're going to provide accurate feedback or accurate solution or address the matter um, in the right way. And then we immediately follow up. So we usually try to follow up within 24 hours and sometimes much shorter, sometimes within you know an hour or so, depending on what the issue is. If someone is saying that, hey, I can't buy tickets because they're sold out to the basketball game, that might be something we can solve really quickly versus another you know problem. Colby, do you have anything you want to add? Um, no, I think uh, I think that the social media monitoring software that we use has allowed us to uh, track how long it takes us to get back to alums. Mm -hmm. So that's something that uh, we kind of keep a, a competition with uh, to see how quickly we can we can respond to these uh, things that we readily have the answer for. So it's important to get it out quickly, but also to take the time to figure out the right response is what I'm hearing from, from you folks, right? That's correct. Yes. You, social media is all about monitoring. It's all about <laughs> listening to what people have to say. So you want to always be listening. You want to, you want to see if something is gaining legs or gaining traction, and you want to you know, come up with the right response. You don't want to just jump in and start you know, <laughs> you know, countering what someone is saying. You have to really listen and see if they really do have a point and find out how you can actually help them to move to an, another place, if possible. Nice. Always be listening. Like, always be closing. ABL. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Colby, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you the next question. When we did the prep work for this, you, um, you had a note about customer service, uh, using social media as the customer service frontier. And I'm going to ask you to break that down for us and tell us what you mean and kind of explain it a little bit. Sure. Um, so. Ten years ago, from what I understand, I wasn't in the alumni relations game ten years ago. Um, but from what I understand, uh, ten years ago, if if an alum had had a complaint or or uh, a comment, you know that alum would, if if he was going to take it up with the university, they would write a letter uh, or pick up the phone and call or even through email uh, contact the university. It was a it was a closed channel so that only. Um, this our office and the alum was seeing it or whoever else they want to uh, give a carbon copy to. Uh, but that's not that's just not how people operate anymore. Um, like I said at the beginning, uh, if I have a negative experience at a restaurant, uh, no one is, is writing a letter per se, but they're they're t dashing off a tweet in the heat of the moment. Um, so you get very raw feedback um, and uh, very quick feedback. So. You simply have to be there because if you're not, uh, the customer might not be meeting you uh, to tell you this is what the experience that I had is. So you really just have to be there. Um, and also we have to uh, keep on top of that as Suzette mentioned through uh, hashtags using social media monitoring software. Um, and also um, I think an example that we had recently was um, there, the member of the class of 2013 uh, graduated. Um, they said they tweeted out something about, "Wow, we were very quick to take away his online access to the library." Um, and now there is a way for alumni to have online access to the library, um, which is a benefit that we offer. And so once I saw this come up, uh, we were able to respond within a couple of minutes, saying, "Actually." Uh, there, you do have access. You just have to sign in a different way, uh, and then provide them with the links to do that. So I think that's an example of, again, this uh, this customer might not have mentioned it at all. They might just have had negative feelings towards 
um, wow, GW cut me off to the library really quickly there, when in actuality, we, we didn't. Um, and we could provide them with accurate information that way. Now, let me ask you, Colby, what, um, you've mentioned social media monitoring software a couple of times. Do you have a specific uh, tool that you use or tools that you can recommend for our viewers? Sure. We uh, have just recently started using Sprout Social, um, and we're still kind of kicking the wheels on it, but uh, I think we've had some really good results uh, with that so far. Um, before, we were using a couple of others and also just, uh, you know, some free ones uh, such as TweetDeck and just keeping the hashtags up there and continuing looking for that. Um, but uh, Sprout Social, I think, has really helped us take uh, take advantage of it and be a little more organized in that way. Um, Suzette, I think, can probably also speak to some of the advantages of having a professional uh, social media software monitoring system. We've also used um, Hootsuite. Um, that has been really helpful as well. It's not very expensive. There's also a free version. I think once you get to, you know, putting out, uh, pulling reports, you have to pay a little bit more. Um, we've used social mention. Uh, we use a variety just to, because no one tool is perfect, but so far we're really happy with um, Sprout Social. We've also used Radiant 6, which is a little bit on the pricier side. It has some really great features. Um, we still use it to some extent. It helps us with our monitoring in terms of what keywords might pop up that might be negative and stuff like that. But again, Sprout Social is what we're really using mostly these days. And we also just um, log into the networks themselves and, and follow them that way to see what people are saying. And now let me ask you, how important are those reports, those stats, those analytics to your customer service presence in particular? Well, the good thing about Sprout Social is that it really helps us to pay attention to how fast we we follow up on issues that might pop up. It also allows us to assign um, certain issues to staff. So, for example, if um, someone is complaining about, you know, a benefit, like, you know, they're, they try to get gym membership at the GW alumni discount and it didn't work out, we could assign that to a staff that, you know, works on that particular benefit, and they will follow up with us and let us know whether or not there is an issue, and we could just let the person know, you know, how to solve that problem. So that's one of the great things about using that that software, and, and that is customer service. It's really, you know, listening to what your customers are happy or unhappy about and trying to improve all the time the service that you're providing. Wonderful. Um, anything to add to that, Colby? You think that you think she did a good job? <laughs> Very. Always, always, always on the ball. That always. One. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you. You guys obviously know what you're talking about. You've been doing this for a while. Um, what are some of the the big lessons you've learned, or some of the best practices that you can share with us? And Suzette, I'll go ahead and go to you first. Well, you know, before I get into the best practice, I'll just say that people are still calling. They're still sending emails. <laughs> so those things are, you know, they're not going away, at least not anytime soon. But I think what we're really noticing is that the newer or the young alumni, you know, people who are 10 years out of the university, they are really looking to use um, Twitter and Facebook, for example, to really follow up on stuff. I've gotten a lots of emails from folks on Facebook saying, um, how do I get a copy of my degree and stuff like that. So people, that is the future. That is what people, there's a generation of folks who think that, um, you know, texting is the best way to communicate with people, even in a formal setting. So we have, as alumni uh, relations professionals, we have to be ready to field questions and to, to connect with folks using social media. Now, as for best practices, what I've said before is we have to always be listening and monitoring listening to our customers, finding out what they're happy about, what they're unhappy about. So having real great um, listening tools. And as I said before, Sprout Social is working for us right now. We've also used Social Mention. Um, we've used Google Alerts. Um, we've used, you know, pretty, pretty, uh, there's a lot of stuff out there that you can actually use to listen to what folks are saying about um, your university. And when I say listen, we, not, we don't just listen for, you know, GW alumni. We, we, we put stuff in like um, GW sucks, you know, because that's what's going to tell you if somebody's unhappy. They're, they're not going to go out and tweet, this is a great university or whatever. They're going to say GW sucks and something else. So we try to pull in those, those keywords and we look at them and we try to address what, why someone would say that. Uh, the other thing we do is we provide timely replies. So if someone asks us a question, we, Colby and I are all, we, you know, we are always monitoring 
Um, we use mobile devices to keep up with what's going on almost, well, I wouldn't say 24-7 because we have to sleep, but we, we really are checking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're checking in all the time to see what people are saying. And we work closely with our external relations folks, which are the people who really manage GW's brand to see if there's anything that pops up. We share it with them to also get their buy-in as to how to respond. Uh, we also use hashtags as a third thing that I'll say. Hashtags have been really helpful, especially for Twitter and now for Facebook. Facebook just rolled out hashtags, so we can also monitor that way. Uh, by, by you know going ahead and establishing certain hashtags for events, um, for alumni, uh, GW alumni relations, um, we're able to provide our, our community with a way to talk about us that we can actually manage and monitor even better versus that people go off and set up a new hashtag about us. We can, you know, you can take the initiative to set something up. That does not mean that they won't go off and set up something else, <laughs> but, you know, we are actually providing them the tools to provide us with the feedback, and that's what hashtag does for us. So that's one way you can use to... Um, one way you could go about aggregating feedback and therefore, you know, providing a service in terms of follow-up. Uh, triage. We, we try to really get um, the right person to follow up on whatever issues that come up. Uh, not because Colby and I manage our, our social media presence. We follow up on everything, and we do follow up on everything. But we also work with other people on staff to provide the right answers. Uh, someone might say, I can't find where this event is happening. What time should the event start? Um, I didn't get a ticket in time. I don't have the answer personally to all of those questions. So I work with folks that are on the events team to, to get you know, those answers out to people that might be asking. Um, replies. Replies should be geared towards helping others with the same issues. That's one of the things that we try to do. We don't, there are times when you would definitely you know, reply either on Facebook or Twitter, you know, turn left and you'll find the event or something like that. But we really try to, to give a, you know, a solid answer so that other people who might have the same issue, because that's usually the case, especially on Twitter, if somebody shares something, people start following that. That's how you get trending topics to see what the solution is. So we try to provide you know, feedback that will help everybody who is watching. So I would say that's my, my five tips for now. Sounds good. How about you, Colby? Do you have five, some five tips you can share? I do. I just happen to have five here. Um, <laughs> so one thing, uh, when we're replying, um, we, we try to add links or telephone numbers for further information. Right. Um, as much as I love Twitter, uh, not everything can be handled in, in the, the limited amount of characters and Facebook as well. So providing people with follow-up information or links to a blog post with the information provided uh, really provides a, a good, uh, provides a service uh, to folks. Um, number seven, uh, note, follow and tag your complaining customers. Um, as unpleasant as it might be to hear negative feedback, um, I think it's very important that we that we do so. We make sure that we're following those folks that have said negative things about us, um, and also that we're noting that in our CRM, uh, our constituent relationship management system. So we know that ooh, the next time we interact with this person, this person had a negative experience here, or this person had some negative feedback at this event. Um, and then, actually, uh, from an alumni relations standpoint we can then link that to their, uh, their record in their alumni database. So we know that this, we had an interaction with this person on this date. Um, so keeping those people, um, keeping up to date on what our interactions with our alumni it is very important. Um, my next piece of advice would be uh, something that Suzette has said, to move those grouses offline when, uh, when possible. Um, a lot of times there's an issue that might be better handled offline. Um, that's part, partly that's containing it. It's showing positive customer service because you can interact with that alum uh, on a one-to-one -one basis, whether that be through a phone call, an email, even sometimes a personal handwritten letter um, is needed. Uh, so getting that outside of the realm of social media um, can kind of contain the damage um, that a complaint would, would bring. And then, of course, number nine, this is, uh, this is pretty self-explanatory, but of course we want to stay professional and courteous to responding to those folks that do um, have complaints. Now, uh, that can be difficult, but uh, we, at GW, we really strive for excellence in customer service. 
Uh, so we want to remember that even when we get a negative tweet at 11.30 at night. Um, and so still provide that same level of service through social media. And then my final one uh, is something that, that Suzette had mentioned before, partnering with external relations who manages the GW brand <clears throat> and make sure that we, uh, we are consistent with their branding efforts. And also, should something come down uh, that they have word of that would affect alumni, hopefully finding out about that in advance so that we know um, that this is something that people are going to be talking about and this is how the university uh, is handling this. So those would be my five tips for customer service in the social media sphere. Seems like you guys have learned a lot and have really put put a lot of that into practice, which is great. So I hope that, that people listening take these tips to heart and that we can we can all learn a lot from this. Um, but enough about the past. I'm obviously <laughs> going to ask you about the future. Um, taking those lessons and best practices into consideration, what do you guys plan to do in the future? Do you have uh, anything you're particularly excited about that you can use social media for? Well, we're definitely just trying to get better at you know using social media. We, we're learning, and so we're just trying to get better at using social media for whatever pops up. Um, for the future, um, we 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 are. We're investing in mobile. We find that a lot of our, our, our visitors are coming to us using mobile phone. It keeps growing every year, um, and this year is no exception. So we are working on improving our mobile web presence. Um, we have improved um, our website is now mobile friendly. We've just relaunched our blog today or yesterday, and that is also um, mobile friendly, gwalumni.org. Um, so that's one of the things where we're, we have rolled out in order to serve um, our community. Uh, we are also planning, you know, other things in the mobile um, sphere, which I won't get into right now, but it should be really exciting. Um, we are also working on launching a new program called GW Alumni Live, which will further connect alumni with um, resources in the university and with each other. You know, we're basically trying to get people to um, use Google Hangout to, to have discussions and to share skills and ideas and stuff like that. So those are two things that we're looking forward to in the future, you know, which is really um, coming out of listening to what alumni really wants and, um, and how they think they could benefit from interacting with us. Colby, what about you? You guys are always cooking up something down there. Um, we, um, I think that uh, one of the great things is that cover. I'm sorry, we work in the basement, which I find is a is a trend among communication folks. They seem to always be putting us in the basement. But um, uh, Suzette was talking about some of the external things we have coming up. I think the internal steps that that I'm always trying to work towards is not putting social media over here in a box for for customer service points of view, but but showing that uh, ingraining it in people. So when an event planner goes to sit down to plan an event and they're looking out at their marketing plan six to eight weeks in advance, that we've got social media right there along with the other avenues um, of marketing. So we think that's one of our next steps and also integrating, um, Suzette touched on Google Hangouts, integrating that into um, our marketing plan for traditional alumni relation events as well. So that's something uh, that I think internally we're very excited about. Wonderful. I'm excited for you guys. Um, mobile is a very exciting thing we're just dipping our toes into too, so I understand where you all are coming from. Um, that was the last question from me, but I believe we've had a couple of questions come in if you guys have the time wow. for some Twitter questions. Um, this sure. one's really good and something that I uh, that I often wonder about. It seems like you guys are um, have a team, and even if it is just you two, um, what if it's just one person? What are some of the tips you can recommend for a, a one-person social media team and, and what they can do to monitor and, and get back to people in a timely manner and stay organized. <laughs> well, yeah, definitely. Well, I'll say that you, uh, the first thing I would do is to find a software that can help you. So, for example, Hootsuite, I think, is really cheap to free. So I would really, you know, use that to, to, to help with the monitoring and to sentiment tracking. And, um, and the other thing that I would do is to, to find people that will be a part of your team. You could get alumni volunteers. A lot of times alumni 
are really you know interested or power users and are happy to to help with some of the functions that you might have for your job and you could also you know find other people on staff that might be interested in social media and just build a team from there uh, that's more or less what we've done and now we we have about 10 to 15 people that show up at our social media team meetings so that's something you, you just build something out of you know folks that are interested Absolutely. I think one example of that that, that we've done um, is we, we have international programs as well uh, in our alumni house. Uh, but we are not very well versed, or at least I, actually I'm not going to speak for Suzette, I am not well versed in uh, Rinrin or Weibo, um, which are the some of the top social media networks in China. Mm -hmm. um, so we've reached out to alumni volunteers and alumni leaders in those nations and, and said, can you be our social media uh, presence in these in these countries with, with our guidance? So coordinating with them um, when I know I'm out of my element. Um, and I think that's, a, that's an example of when our team uh, just didn't have the resources to do that. And then I think the second thing that I'd emphasize again is uh, you'd be surprised how quickly a social media team grows. Uh, Suzette and I went from exchanging emails between the two of us and meeting to having 15 people who their job titles range from everything from uh, director of regional programs um, to the folks who are um, who are assistants to event planners and they're all part of our social media team because social media shouldn't be uh, isolated it should be integrated into what everyone does uh, at least in in our office and that seems to be working well it's wonderful. And actually, our friend Mallory Wood has a question about your social media team. Um, she just tweeted me and wants to know, how often do you guys meet? Who is invited? Tell us a little bit about that team and those 10 to 15 people and how you put them to work. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we try to meet every two weeks. Um, we are currently planning Alumni Weekend, which is a big event that's happening in the fall in September, late September. And um, we're going to start meeting weekly just so that we could help the Alumni Weekend team to come up with great ideas to use social media to promote the event and to also bring the event to folks who are unable to, to attend. So every other week or every week, depending on what's going on, it, you know, it just depends on what your work schedule is like. I can't remember the other part of the question. <laughs> I was going to say, Colby maybe can take the other part of uh, who, who are the members and who's invited. Sure. Yeah. Um, we invited everyone uh, who has any kind of social media presence uh, through our office. Um, and then also anyone who would like to learn about, uh, about social media. Um, I think one thing that, uh, that we have learned is that sometimes having a, and it sounds very cliche and cheesy, but having a cast of characters can be very helpful. Um, we have one gentleman who is the director of career service of alumni career services, and he is a character, uh, just all by himself. <laughs> social media or not, he is a character. But um, we found, and he's certainly part of our social media team, and we found that sometimes the best, it, no, that the best way to advertise a uh, alumni career service event is to have him tweet and then us retweet it. Um, so he he's invited. Um, Anyone, there, there's someone who I, I don't believe was ever on social media before and uh, just had an interest in it, and now she is making sure all of her events have hashtags. So it's anyone who has questions, who wants to learn more. We have everything from power users to people who have never uh, used Twitter before and are just now getting on Facebook. Um, so we try to be as inclusive as possible to get as much buy-in as possible. That's right. Wonderful. One final question for you all. Um, this is something I hear a lot about too, the private social networks versus the Facebook and the Twitters. You know, a lot of times the argument is Twitter is going away or the Facebook brand doesn't mean as much as the GW brand. Do you guys have, have, did you explore private social networks? What's your experience with it? Is it something you think, you know, is worth looking into or would you stick to Facebook? I can see Colby. Colby looks like he's dying to answer this. <laughs> I'll, I'll, um, let, I'll let Colby take the ball. The first, back. the first stab. <laughs> uh, yeah, Suzanne and I haven't actually spoken about this before, so we might completely oh. disagree. We might get some uh -oh. controversy on here. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I believe that 
knowing our alumni, um, that we need to meet them where they are. Um, in fact, I think I'm going to be so bold as to say that that's a good policy uh, in social media across the, uh, across the uh, spectrum, for no matter what your university is. So if people are gathering in that space, if your alumni are gathering on Twitter, on Google+, on Facebook, on Instagram, um, that I think that's where we need to be because we want to be part of their daily lives. Uh, to have them, to ask them to log in uh, to a separate network you know, where it's not part of their daily routine, um, I don't know if that's the most efficient use of our resources at this point. Um, and yeah, we, we do talk about how, I, I mean, I know I don't spend as much time on Facebook as I used to, um, but I also see the numbers and I see people around me uh, still logging in every day. Um, so I don't think that, uh, that we'll be abandoning our Facebook page anytime soon. Suzette, what do you think? I agree with Colby for the most part. I think that private um, networks, they are, they're also, they are valuable. Um, it, it, it demonstrates that people trust the, the university and trust the network and there are things that they want to keep there. So for people who want to use a private network, I think that is great. But Colby's right. You have to meet people where they are and most people are going to these public, these public networks. The other thing is that the public networks, they have the funds to actually you know, um, keep improving those networks to make them robust. And sometimes when you have a private network, it does not provide some of the features that people have gotten used to using the, the ones that are free, like the Facebook and the Twitter and stuff like that. And they become really frustrated. And you know, then you start having a bunch of people that are complaining about the tool that you're providing for them to have a private network. So I definitely think um, you should just be wherever your folks are and provide the best service that you can possibly provide. Um, you know, and just make it clear that this is a private network and here are the limitations. And of course, we're in a public network where we can also be off service. Because the, the bottom line is, is really service, is connecting um, alumni with benefits and services and each other. And so wherever you can do that, that's where you should be. And I know I said that was the last question, but Mallory snuck another one in and it actually oh. relates to this answer. <laughs> no. So so it's good. Um, she she wants to know, you know, do you have any suggestions between balancing between some of these tried and true, um, you know, Facebooks and Twitters, the established, and maybe some of the new and shinies, the Tumblers that, you know, or, or Pinterest when everybody jumped on Pinterest. How do you guys keep that balance and what do you pick and choose? To go well, to. We certainly have limited resources. Um, so we, we we try to, if something is new, we watch it to see its growth rate and to see who is on there. And we do set up a presence in most places. We do have um, a presence in Pinterest. We, we I think we have Tumblr. Uh, we have a lot of accounts. But we set them up. We outfit them as best as possible. Uh, we try to get alumni volunteers or volunteer staff to, to watch and monitor and to you know, share content and figure out what the voice, what is the right voice there, or what is it that people need there, and um, and we just watch to see if it grows. If it doesn't, we we focus on the ones that are growing rapidly and the places where, you know, alumni really want us to be. Colby? I would, I would absolutely agree with that, um, and then add on to that that um, while we certainly pay attention to where our alumni are, um, one of the things that that I've I'm interested in is where the class of 2017 is or whatever class might be coming in. Um, and I do that for a couple of reasons. One, because uh, lots of times they are on to what is going to be the next social network before mm -hmm. our alumni are. So it's, it's good to know that. Um, uh, and also, I want us as the GW alumni brand to start interact interacting with students or as I like to call them future alumni um, before they leave campus or in the class of 2017 before they even uh, get on campus. So um, Suzette and I have been back and forth about Instagram, but it's something that, we, that we've that we decided to stick with and make sure we've got a presence there because uh, very recent alumni and also the class of 2017 is there. So it's a way for us to, to reach out and establish a connection with them uh, before they even get on the university. And I think that's something that's positive for our brand and that, that pays off uh, after they in the years after they graduate college. The other thing to also keep in mind is that 
some networks may not bring you the, the huge crowd that you think that you should have. Some networks are really for are really niche. So one of the one of the networks we have like that is um, Google Plus. Uh, Google Plus is great. Um, we don't have a strong presence there, and we are currently looking into that. And what we found is that um, Google Plus is mostly used by students and folks that are in the tech sector. And I think what we're going to do in the future is try to develop, you know, use get programming or, or content or a voice there that appeals to both students and folks in the tech sector and then watch to see which one of those two things take. So for example, our GW Alumni Live um, project that we're working on or starting up, we'll, we'll definitely be testing it using Google Plus and we'll see what happens. So you can do a lot of testing and you learn a lot. For example, you know, like I said, we're learning that tech folks and students are using Google Plus. And we'll set, set up there and see what, what happens. Well, good luck with that. I, I can't yeah. wait until you guys get on Snapchat, too, because I know <laughs> we're probably the only three people who aren't using it. So, uh, <laughs> I, I just can't wait. Um, I think that's it. Is there anything anything we didn't touch on you guys want to leave last, last thoughts with people? Um, anything you want to add to tonight's show? Well, you know, you can always you send me a tweet at Suzette Gardner, and I'll be happy to answer any questions that, that get answered here. Absolutely, and I'm at Colby C. Anderson, um, and uh, thank you, I think, from, for both of us for having us on tonight and letting us share some of the things that we've learned. Yeah, nice. Thank you both. Um, next Thursday, Higher Ed Live will be back with uh, Drew Milliken. I hope I am pronouncing your name right, Drew. Please forgive me if I'm not. And Mike Nagel, and they're going to talk about Independent Schools Web. And I think we're going to tweet out that um, that tweet now so you guys can pay attention and hang out until uh, next Thursday when you'll be back <laughs> live with them. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Thank you for a wonderful show. Thank you to our guests. Suzette and Colby and feel free to follow up with them and tweet some some jokes and send them some snapchats <laughs> <laughs> thanks everyone bye